Hi, this is Nori with My Service Depot. Please note that the content you're about to view is meant as a generalization of the smart service job process as a whole. It's not directed at any specific industry or your company's personalized process. However, by learning the basics of smart service, we hope to give you a head start on using our software. If you would like to see a demonstration of a specific function or process in smart service, you should consider visiting us at smartservice.com forward slash webinar and joining the next live event or watching one of our previous recordings. You can also join our weekly QA webinars to speak with your trainers directly. You can sign up for these weekly QA webinars at smartservice.com forward slash knowledge base. This series will be divided into five segments to ensure the best learning experience. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please give us a call at 888-518-0818. If you're interested in purchasing additional live training, please let us know. All of the names, addresses, and contact information displayed in this video are purely fictitious and for demonstration purposes only. Any references to any real entity is purely coincidental. All right, everyone, so let's begin with basic navigation. There are three windows you'll want open at all times. These are the search, scheduler, and office screens. The search screen will display all of your customers and the contact information within your database. The scheduler is where you'll go to schedule your work orders and estimates. Finally, you'll go to the office screen to review work completed by the field, send invoices and payments to QuickBooks, and much more once you get the hang of Smart Services basic features. First, let's go ahead and take a look at our search screen. In this window, we can search for any of our customers. In the top left is a search for field. You can search for any of the information that you can gather about your customer. That could be their name, any part of their address, their phone number, their email, whatever you have will work just fine. You're not limited to searching for just customers either. The search in dropdown will allow you to search for any other record type. You can search for inactive customers by checking the show inactives box here as well. To search for a customer, enter some customer information and press the enter key on your keyboard to search. When you find the desired customer record, click on their name underlined here in blue on the left hand side of your screen. This will open that customer record and allow you to make changes to that customer's information. Now remember, any changes that you make to the customer record in Smart Service will be instantaneously and automatically transferred to QuickBooks for you. When you're done making your changes, go ahead and click the Save and Close button on this customer by using the Save and Close button at the top right hand corner. If you want more information on creating and managing your customers, we'll come back to that topic in the next video. For now, make sure you know how to find your existing customers in Smart Service. Next, open the scheduler. You may have to set up your scheduler for the first time. To do so, click here to open up the Smart Pane, select the number of days you wish to view, and click here to change from route view, which is one person at a time, to a department and select a department. Finally, use the Today button to get to the current date. You can also click on the dates above the Today button to select a different date, or click on the month above that to select a different month. Once you selected these preferences, you wanted to set up the scheduler like this again. Feel free to choose other preferences as well. These preferences will be saved to your user profile specifically. Another option you should be aware of is the waiting list at the bottom of your scheduler. Sometimes appointments get sent here to the waiting list if they're waiting on parts, they're waiting to be rescheduled, or they're waiting on something else before they can be scheduled. You can open the waiting list by clicking the View Waiting List button here at the bottom of your scheduler. Let's finish up this navigation video with the Office screen. Now, there are a lot of options on the Office screen. We only need to use a few of them to use the program effectively for now, though. The most important section of this screen is the Review and Post section at the bottom left-hand corner of the window. When your technician completes a work order in iFleet, that work order gets sent down here for someone in the office to review, which is something you should be checking for daily. On my screen, the option is called Post Work Orders, but your company may have changed the terminology. Yours might say Post Service Tickets, Post Invoices, or whatever your company prefers to call the Smart Service Work Order document. We'll talk about these options more in the fifth and final video of the series. For now, remember that you'll need the Search and Scheduler screens to create a work order for the field, and you'll need the Office screen to invoice for work completed by the field. Thanks for taking the time to watch our video. This video is part of a Quick Start Guide playlist for new users. Our team would love to speak with you further if you had any questions about the content we've covered. You can also speak directly with a trainer on the best options for your business by joining our free QA webinars, which you can sign up for at smartservice.com forward slash knowledge base. You can reach a member of our support team by giving us a call at 
0818 or emailing us at support at myservicedepot.com.